Have you ever wanted to make a coverage map for a hypothetical radio station, outdoor Wi-Fi system, amateur radio repeater, or anything else wireless? A coverage map is generally not as simple as drawing circles around a point. Terrain, trees, and buildings all impact signal strength and, in some cases, can block a signal entirely. The complex nature of radio wave propagation makes producing detailed coverage maps by hand just about impossible. However, computer programs can produce these maps, as they just require many repeated calculations. Today we are going to be exploring a free software package to do just this, Radio Mobile. Radio Mobile uses the Longley-Rice model, also known as the Irregular Terrain model, which was developed in the 1960s. First, if you don't already have it, I highly recommend installing Google Earth Pro, which can be used to view your final coverage maps. Despite the name, Google Earth Pro is free. It's just the version of Google Earth that you download to your computer. Click the link in the description to get Google Earth Pro. And I'm going to uncheck this. And accept and download. We'll just save it to downloads. And run the EXE. Now let's install Radio Mobile. Click the second link in the description and click the link here to download the installer. Now open the zip folder and run radiomobilesetup.exe. Click through the installer. Take note of this screen. And when you get here, click viewmaplink.txt. Now backspace out the apostrophe that starts each of the top four lines. Doing this allows the program to use these services to obtain map data. By removing the apostrophes, you are agreeing to the terms and conditions of these services. And make sure you save. We're going to just exit out of the pre-made maps. Now go to Options Internet and SRTM, which is the terrain model. Set the Internet FTP directory to Best Data Site 2. This will obtain the highest possible resolution terrain model for your area. And click OK. Now click Land Cover to toggle it green. Land Cover accounts for objects above the ground, such as buildings and trees. You'll have to wait a little while the first time while the program obtains the needed files from the internet. Now go to File, New Networks. And we'll say yes to this. Now let me briefly explain the hierarchy of networks, systems, and units. A network consists of systems that can communicate with each other. It is characterized primarily by a frequency range. A system is defined by specific RF parameters such as transmit power, receiver threshold, line loss, antenna gain, etc. And a unit is defined by a specific set of coordinates. So multiple units might belong to the same system, and multiple systems might belong to the same network. For this example, we'll just go with the defaults, so OK. Now go to File Map Properties. This is where you define the center and size of your coverage map. We're going to enter latitude and longitude for the center of the map. In this example, I'm using the Cathedral of Learning at the University of Pittsburgh. This is where the repeater I will be modeling, W3YJ, is located. You can obtain latitude and longitude data from Google Maps or elsewhere. Now, for this example, I'm going to set the size in pixels of the map to 8000 by 8000. This should provide a fairly detailed map when I export it to Google Earth Pro. 
Just ignore the warning. Modern computers shouldn't have trouble with this. And I'm going to set the size of the map to 300 by 300 kilometers. This will allow us to plot a 150 kilometer, or 93 mile, coverage radius. The map size you use will be very dependent on frequency and application. If you are using a smaller size than this, you might be able to get away with a lower resolution as well. Now click Extract. Now we wait while the program downloads all the terrain data needed from the internet. And now we start to see our map. Let's maximize it. Now it's downloading the land cover data. And once that's done, let's just go ahead and save it. Now go to File, Networks Properties, and make sure that you are in the Parameters tab. For this example, I'm going to name Net1 as W3YJ Repeater. I'm going to set the minimum and maximum frequency that the repeater will be using. The repeater downlink is on 443.45 MHz, and the uplink is on 448.45. So 443 to 449 will work fine. Make sure to set the antenna polarization correctly. In this case, it is vertical. And for this case, I'm going to set the mode of variability to mobile. Make any other changes you see fit on this screen. I'm going to leave the other values as default and click OK. Now go back to File Networks Properties. Make sure the desired network is highlighted on the left hand side and click Systems. We're going to make System 1 our base station. So let's name it W3YJ Base Station. For this station, the transmitter power is 35 watts. The receiver threshold is 0.2 microvolts. The line loss is probably about 3 dB. If you know your feed line length and type, you can use tables online to estimate this loss. I typically then add an extra dB or so for connectors. Our antenna gain is specified as 5 dBd. Note that dBi automatically calculates and vice versa. And the antenna height is about 163 meters, or 535 feet above the ground. Now we're going to make System 2 our mobile. So let's name it W3YJ Mobile. I'm going to model it as a generic 5 watt HT or handheld transceiver. Once again, I'll use a receiver threshold of 0.2 microvolts. We'll do 1 dB of loss and 1 dBd of antenna gain. And leave the antenna height at 2 meters or 6 feet. And click OK. Now let's go to File Unit Properties and name Unit 1 as W3YJ Base Station. Let's click Enter Lat Lawn. And once again, I'm going to enter the coordinates of the Cathedral of Learning, which we previously used to set the center of the map. And click OK. Notice that it automatically computes the elevation for these coordinates. Now let's name Unit 2 as W3YJ Mobile. Even though this will be treated as a mobile unit for coverage calculation, I still recommend setting a position, even just a dummy position, as this seems to be required for proper ERP calculation in the point-to-point -point analysis tool. So let's enter that lawn, and I'll enter the coordinates of the point where the rivers come together in Pittsburgh. And click OK. And if we drag the window over, we can see our base station in mobile. So let's click OK. Now let's go to File Networks Properties and go to the Membership tab. Make sure the desired net is selected, in this case W3YJ Repeater. Now we're going to check W3YJ Base Station, set its role to Command, and set its system to W3YJ Base Station. And now we're going to select W3YJ Mobile, check it, 
set its role to subordinate, and set its system to W3YJ mobile. And click OK. Let's go ahead and save what we've done so far. We are finally ready to make a coverage plot. Let's go to Tools, Radio Coverage, Single Polar. We'll set the center unit, mobile unit, and network as shown. For link direction, I'll set it to worst case, which for this example should generally be from the mobile to the base station. If you are only interested in one direction, you can pick the respective option. Under Plot, check Fill Area, Rainbow, and if you want to sound when it's done, complete dot wave. Now let's click color. Here we can set the number of colors. I'll use six. The top color denotes the out of range color. I recommend leaving it as white since you can set white as transparent when saving a map to an image. For the other colors, I'm going to do violet, blue, green, yellow, and red, with red being the strongest. This choice is entirely up to you and I recommend saving the color scheme you define. And click OK. Now, under Threshold, I'm going to set it to DBM, uncheck Auto Set, and go from a negative 120 to negative 60. This range may be different depending on your application. Since my receiver thresholds are about negative 120 DBM, Negative 120 makes sense for a minimum. And if we go back to color, we can see the minimum signal threshold required for each color. So click OK. Now first we are going to make a very coarse coverage map. This is a good idea to evaluate your map's size and any other obvious issues before you waste a lot of time making detailed maps. In the radial range, we'll set the minimum distance to 1 km and the maximum to 150 km. Note the max value will depend on the map size you set. In the azimuth range section, we'll plot from 0 degrees to 360 degrees in 1 degree steps. And click Draw. Click Yes to redraw a picture in gray mode. Select Keep an Actual Picture and OK. Scroll to the edges of your map and see if it appears you used a large enough map size and prediction radius. In this case, it looks like we did. Now we are going to wipe this map out and create a more detailed one. Go to File, Picture Properties, select White, and click Draw. Now go back to Tools, Radio Coverage, Single Polar. We're going to lower the azimuth step to 0.05 degrees. Now, while you can set a step for the azimuth, you unfortunately cannot set a step for the distance. The only way I've found to decrease the distance step is to reduce the radial range. Unfortunately, this requires plotting multiple rings if you are calculating coverage for long distances. For this example, I'm going to use the following radial ranges in kilometers. 0 0.05 to 15, 15 to 30, 30 to 60, 60 to 100, and 100 to 150. So let's first do the 0 0.05 to 15, and click Draw. If we scroll back to the center of the map, we can see it plot the calculations in real time. After each ring is plotted, select Keep an Actual Picture, and OK. Now I'll repeat the same process for the other ranges. And once the last ring is done, let's save this as a picture. To export the plot to an image, we'll go to File, Save Picture As. I'm going to make a folder for it. 
Make sure you set the file type to PNG as this format provides the best quality and supports transparency. And I'm going to give the file a more descriptive name. And click Save. I recommend checking White is Transparent, setting the opacity to 255, and leaving Optimization of Color Palette unchecked. And click OK. And we can say yes to making PNG the default type. Now, if we go to the folder where we exported the image to, we'll see a KML file with the same name. You can double click it to open it up with Google Earth Pro. Now, 3D buildings may be on by default, and these will obscure your map so I recommend turning them off. Here, we can zoom in on any area of interest and see pretty detailed coverage calculations. Now, let's close out of Google Earth Pro and go back to Radio Mobile, where I'll demonstrate one more thing. Let's go to Tools, Radio Link. Here we can see the terrain profile and land cover between the transmitter and receiver. We can quickly swap the mobile and the base station by clicking Swap. Note that our base station to mobile signal is stronger than the mobile to base station. This is expected in our case, since the base station has much more power. Now let's go to somewhere further away. And left click on a point we want to analyze. Now go to File, Unit Properties, and make sure the mobile station is selected. And click Place Unit at Cursor Position. You can also enter a lat lawn here, which would probably be more practical. All right, let's click OK. And go back to Tools, Radio Link. The distance is so extreme now that we can see the curvature of the Earth, but we still have line of sight. Now, let's move the mobile station to a weaker area, like somewhere in the purple. Now we no longer have line of sight, so the wave must diffract or bend around obstacles. Waves at this frequency diffract some, but not much, so a received signal will be weak. Now, let's save the network and the map. There's no need to overwrite the PNG we already made. On a final note, I recognize this software is advanced and complicated. I am still not familiar with all of its features myself. More information, including guides, will be provided in the description, and I might make a follow-up video if I see fit. Feel free to drop your comments, questions, and suggestions down below. Thank you for watching.